Hello, this is Shane Young from shaneyoungweddings.co.uk. Uh, now, I know this isn't a wedding image, but if you saw the last blog post, you'll know that we did a shoot with singer-songwriter Vince Freeman, a good friend of mine. So, this was the shot straight out of camera, and I want to do a few bits and pieces to it to uh, make the most of it. Um, so, I'll walk you through my general workflow. Now, I took this on tungsten white balance, and it's made it very blue. I did that because I was also using an um, orange filter on the flash. Um, but what happened just as I took it was the sun came out and added another shadow. The shadow on the left is from the sun and the shadow on the right is from my flash. Luckily it's kind of hidden. Um, but anyway, the overall effect is it's all a bit too blue. So I'm taking the temperature up just a small amount and um, I think that already looks a bit more human so we'll go with that for now <clears throat> and another thing I want to do I think is adjust the crop it's always best to shoot a bit wider than you plan to actually use so that you can crop it how you want to later rather than crop tight and then uh, in camera and then have no leeway a little bit better um, and also while we're at it let's see if we can straighten up some of the verticals a little bit I prefer to do this in manual um, we've got a situation where even if the verticals are, are um, vertical <laughs> the horizontals won't be because we shot at an angle but um, I think that looks okay so just a mere tweak until we've got some of these lines of course, when I point at it, the grid goes away, but lined up with the grid. Verticals there look pretty good. Plus three or four is the most. Plus three. Okay, looks good. I may just tweak that crop in a little bit more there and a little bit more. No, that's not what I want to do. A bit more there. Go with that. Right now, there are some detail issues here. There's a little spot that we need to get rid of on Vince's nose there. There's some shiny forehead that we also need to get rid of. Um, and I'd like to be able to add a bit more grittiness to the background. But while we're at it, I may just make the blacks a little more black. Now, I quite like to use the alt and then adjust the blacks with the alt button pressed down because you can see only where the blacks are being affected. And I think we can safely get away with that much. Just gives it a little bit more weight, I think. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens if I let's zoom in on this area here and take the clarity up about 10. Fourteen. There we go. Um, I think that helps the detail in the strap and frets and so on. Just make them pop a little bit more. Um, the whole thing's a little bit dark, so you can safely come up by that much. I think I'm always keeping an eye on this um, highlight on the uh, the top right here. Highlight alert, if you like. If that starts going white, then um, we're getting too many highlights that will be blown out. So we're quite safe there. Um, and I think we could probably push the vibrance. I do like my colours strong, and I have to make sure I don't go over the top. But um, that really makes that yellow pop against the green, and the, the blues are looking good. But I don't think the face is too colourful. So we'll go with that. Um, and even now, as I look at it, I think maybe it could be a tad warmer. So, okay. We're now going to open that in Photoshop to do the rest of the adjustments. Right click, open in Photoshop. Right. 
almost always the first thing I do is Command J to duplicate the layer. Um, and then we can start making some adjustments. One thing that I really want to do is just bring out a little bit, bit more grittiness in that background. So to do that, I go to Filter, Other, High Pass. I want to accentuate the edges of things a little more, not so much on the subject, but the background. Let me try about there, that's, that's quite noticeable. Um, and then we need to blend that, so um, soft light is often a good place to start, but if we really want to make the most of the grittiness, go to overlay. Now that's a bit too much, so maybe I'll go back to soft light. And we can obviously toggle that layer on and off to see the difference. If you ignore what it does to Vince and just look at the background, that's lifted some of the grunge out quite nicely. So I'm going to go with that. Um, but we, we need to get rid of it, get rid of the effect on Vince. So come down bottom right to add layer mask, click on that, which has added a white layer mask here. So if we now change the foreground color to black, brush on with a soft brush, let's check that it's um, hardness is right there and start brushing at 100% opacity over Vince. Maybe just over Vince's skin so that we don't make it his skin look all gritty. Because actually it works quite well on the rest of him. Maybe take it off the guitar body a little bit. Well that's quite punchy. So then flatten the image. Um, and then I think we can deal with a couple of issues with the uh, skin. As I said, we need to do something about this shiny forehead and we've got a little spot there on the nose. So let's deal with the spot and duplicate the layer just in case we need to blend in what we've done a little bit. The spot healing brush, the perfect tool. Use the left and right bracket keys to change the size of the brush. That looks fine. So in fact, I'll flatten the image and then duplicate the layer again because we want to keep what we just did. And this time, instead of the spot healing brush, we're going to use just the healing brush tool to do something about this shininess. So if we, to sample an area of the skin, we hold Alt and click. We can just now paint over those shiny areas. Now obviously that might look a little bit too fixed, so we can bring down the opacity of that layer to, I don't know, 50%, a bit more. That's before, that's after. So it still looks fairly natural. If we now zoom out to see how it looks. Yeah, I think it looks fine. Flatten that. So that's coming along. I'm just having a little look over it now, see what else we might do. I think it might be worth a little trick I often use. Again, let's um, add a new layer duplicate the layer rather. Just to see how much brightness is possible, we'll use a curves layer. And by clicking auto, this will show us how much brightness we could have without overexposing, clipping any highlights. Um, now what that's done is um, made it all kind of a little less atmospheric. So Firstly, I'm going to merge, merge down, which just merges the um, curves layer with the one below. So I could just got the one layer to deal with. That looks nice, and that looks too bright. But 
think it might help to lift Vince away from the background a little bit to add some of that on him only. So if we alt click on the add layer mask, it just shows us the underneath layer. We have a black mask covering the lighter layer. So if I change the brush to white now, we can brush in some of the brightness on Vince. It just makes him stand out more against the background. It is a bit too strong, I think. So let's try about seventy percent. So before, after, let's lift it in. We'll go with that. That in the image. Zoom in a little bit and make sure we haven't gone too far. That's fine, isn't it? This is all quite vivid on the strap. Okay, um, final thing, duplicate the layer again. I'm going to so I seem to have unclick to the layer. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette and I'll use the lens correction filter for this. If I was back in Lightroom, I would use uh, the Lightroom vignette. This can sometimes be a little more subtle. So I've gone down, I've used the custom function uh, and brought the vignette down by uh, minus 44 in this case. And it's also corrected the uh, barrel distortion a little bit. So before, after. By darkening the edges a bit, it just draws a bit more attention to the, the focal point, i.e. Vince. That's quite nice. I might crop it a little bit more, but I'll take it back into Lightroom for that. Okay, so close. It asks us if we want to save it. Save. Back in Lightroom, we have the original shot. If I reset that, looks like that. And now our new shot before, after, and now final extra crop. Plus some of that black, I think, is kind of distracting. Yeah. Before, after. What do you think we did? We warm it up too much? Take that down. Before, after, that, that goes pop. It might even be worth just sharpening up the eyes, it's always um, worth a look. So, should have done it in Photoshop. Little bit extra. And there we go. Um, hope you found it helpful and um, come back to www.shaneyoungweddings.co.uk forward slash blog for the next one. See you then.